Hey there, my name is Jan Klaassen. I'm a web developer here at Cloud Canon, and I'm part of our services team. Today, I'll be talking about a stack we use for some of our websites in the services team. Our services team's main role is to help enterprise customers build websites and apps that uses our CMS with a focus on using Jamstack ecosystem. Some of our clients are Twitch, Netflix, and Fabricard. These are clients that need secure, scalable, and easily editable websites. Building websites are time consuming and great designs expect consistency across the site. So what can we do to be more economical with our time, but still keep to the above requirements? This is where our industry naturally gravitated towards using components a way of reusing small pieces of code across our sites and apps, often referred to as includes or what our Yugo community likes to call partials. We have also had some great improvements in our design systems, helping push this mindset forward with the likes of Brad Frost's atomic design system. To give you an example, we would refer to small building blocks like inputs, buttons and labels as atoms and then molecules would be the combination of these atoms. For example, if we would combine inputs, labels, and buttons, we would get a form. This process of combining components can then occur up until the point where we have a fully fledged site. In essence, this leads us to the point where instead of building pages, we are rather assembling them. The H. Yugo provides reusable components and a convenient standard file structure, super fast build times, easy to use templating, powerful commands and configurations. The list goes on. And I think I should rather stop right there as I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir. The A, Alpine JS, a minimalistic front end framework for adding JavaScript behavior to HTML markup. It's simple approach to sprinkling JavaScript onto your website without the need to use massive frameworks like Next.js or SvelteKit. My thoughts on this is why buy an 18 wheeler truck if a small car would get you into town and back faster and cheaper. On top of being incredibly small, it gets written in your HTML. So think Tailwind for JavaScript. And then it will follow that component around wherever it gets used exactly what we need for component-driven development. As a side note, I wouldn't recommend Alpine.js for very complex web apps, as your mileage will be better going with a larger framework. The B, Bookshop. A component sandbox browser, a little place where you as a developer can frolic around and experience your components as you built it from conception to completion seeing how that component will look in different variants and environments, editing any state live in the browser to your heart's content. Bookshop has native support for Yugo out of the box. I would be hard pressed to develop any site today without the use of Bookshop. Bookshop also integrates as an optional bonus point into Cloud Canon CMS, allowing for live editing while using its platform. And on top of all of this, it's open source. I can highly recommend Liam Bigelow's workshop tomorrow if you want to see Bookshop in action. The I, internationalization. I'll be honest, we just needed a vowel. And seeing as Hugo did a great job adding internalization to our sites, we thought we were in our rights to use it. Check out John Yablonski's talk on demystifying internalization with Hugo a bit later on in the conference. The T, Tailwind. What's not to love about Tailwind? A massive collection of very tiny CSS classes that each represents CSS properties and values, allowing you to completely style your components and sites fully inside your HTML. Trust me, I had the shivers run up and down my back when the request came through from Sam at Twitch to use Tailwind. Just a quick shout out to Sam for coining the habit stack. But me being a CSS purist, with all my BEM naming conventions, was fairly quickly won over after jumping into my first project. Naming your classes is such an unnecessary drain on the mind. And don't even get me going on the mental mind map you need to keep track of when targeting each of those classes to ensure your CSS is correctly selected. 
on each element. As with AlpineJS, the styles will follow the component around wherever it gets used, exactly what we need for component-driven development. It doesn't help much that I just talked the talk here. I would like to also walk the walk by sharing a working site using the habit stack with you all. I developed the yogaconf site using the habit stack and we will be sharing its source code with you all. You'll be able to fork or automatically deploy it by going to our GitHub under CloudCanon front slash yugoconf2022. It's been made to be completely editable in CloudCanon CMS. There will be a deploy button that will get you editing and provide you with your own live site in seconds, allowing you to assemble and try out every single component and also see and experience how I've constructed a complex array of components to allow for an editor to easily assemble forms by themselves without the help of a developer. Some advanced workflows. We usually have multiple sites or even microsites using the same component library. And there is a necessity to be able to reuse these components for each of these sites. We would use Yugo modules to export our components, data files, images, JavaScript, and CSS to our other sites. This would usually be achieved by using some pre-built scripts and get hooks to automate the process. Leave some comments in this video if you would like to hear some more on these workflows. I could then come back and make a follow-up video. So looking into the future, currently I'm closely monitoring standardization of the design tokens by the W3C design token group, especially looking at the work Jan6 is doing with his Figma plugin Figma tokens. It essentially breaks our atomic design system down to even smaller pieces, like for example, adding colors, sizes, different paddings, and then by ab able to take a JSON file that gets generated from that, we can then push this JSON file to our Git repos all across every site that's been deployed with this component library. That allows us in return to have designers be able to update the Figma and then automatically update all our sites via the power of Git. I feel this would add another awesome layer to having much more better workflows for component driven development. Thank you for coming to our habit stack journey and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Mm -hmm.